In this chapter, we'll learn how to use the correction tools to restore and correct photos. This is a great skill for anyone learning Photoshop. Let's get started. Let's begin by bringing some pictures in through a scanner. So I'm going to click on File, Import. Photoshop does support importing from a scanner. And I'm going to point to Images from Device. On Windows, you will see WIA support. I already have my scanner hooked up, so we see that it does come up in the Devices area. And you can hear it waking up the scanner. And what's neat about this is that Photoshop will recognize if you're putting multiple images on your scanner. So you can see here I have two images. One is of my great uncle Nick on the left, and the other is of my dad and my older brother. So if you want to work along with me, you will find these images in your Chapter 6 folder, but you can of course also scan your own images. So what we've got checked here, which happens automatically, is it's going to automatically select separate items. So when I choose to scan these, it's going to take the same settings for both, and it will scan them into separate Photoshop documents. So that can save you a lot of time, so you don't have to put one image down, do a scan, change your image out, and put another one down. So what our goal is, is to bring these into Photoshop and then do some photo correction. Now, normally I would probably do these separate and I would do all my color images first, and then I would do my black and white or grayscale images second, so that I could use the same settings. But it's okay to have our black and white image of my dad set as color. It's going to come out just fine. Now, I am changing the resolution. The default resolution is set to 50, which is kind of low and would be fine if you're just planning on publishing these to Facebook or on a family website or something. But since I'm planning to work on these, I want them a little larger so I can actually see the detail and be able to zoom in and make corrections on any of the flaws that are in the picture, like folds or tears in the image or spots. There may be water spots or whatever. So I'm going to actually set mine to 240. So that gives me a large enough image to work on, and then I could even print it if I chose to, if I wanted to make corrections and then actually make a printable version of it. And I do have the auto selection selected, and I'm going to go ahead and scan this to my Chapter 6 folder, for my project folder. The default name is Scan, and it will put a number on it, so as I continue to scan images, they will become numbered consecutively with the name Scan. Now, if I was doing all one time period or one family member, I could obviously change this name to something else that would make more sense. And then down here, there are some selections. I'm going to deselect the color restoration. There are selections here where you can do some basic image correction. You can do some dust removal, things like that. But we're going to go ahead and make our corrections in Photoshop. And one more thing, down at the bottom, we have the overview button. This would allow us to leave our software open and change the pictures on our flatbed and then click overview and it would rescan our images and give us a preview of our next pictures that we have on our flatbed. So we're ready to click scan and you can see it starts to go through its little work and it's going to start by scanning the document on the left and then the document on the right. So first my great uncle Nick is brought in and again we had the option selected to create a new Photoshop document. So he's going to come in as one document and the image is going to also be saved to my folder. So I have it already opened in Photoshop. Let me go ahead and show you that. I'm going to do File, Open. And I'm going to go to my Chapter 6 folder. And we can see here that the pictures have already been saved into my Chapter 6 folder where I had pointed it to. And they're also already open for me in Photoshop. So if I do a Save command at this point, after making any changes, it would overwrite that JPEG and save my Photoshop document as a JPEG rather than as a Photoshop document. But this will allow me to work on these.